how are you reading this current bounce back, uh, Aditya? Because it's caught so many people on the wrong side. So many people are waiting to buy on 14,000 or at, at 14,000 rather, and we have 17,000 uh, rather quickly. Uh, in fact, it looks like 17,500 could be here. Uh, your thoughts? I think so. You know, sometimes we have experienced in the market that, you know, if you are too cute with timing, it doesn't work. Uh, you know, I think so. Uh, their uh, correction in a lot of small and mid caps was very, very sharp. In fact, at one point in time, we had close to, you know, 900 stocks which are corrected by more than 50%. Uh, our view is that, you know, it is better to be bottom up in this market because flows can uh, surprise a lot of people very quickly. Uh, there has been a lot of selling, uh, uh, you know, $40 billion worth of FI selling has been absorbed by the locals. And our view is that, you know, you, even if you have uh, a slight bit of buying from the FI side, be it sentiment or be it, you know, a sharp fall of crude, uh, which can happen at any given point in time, uh, this is a very, very good bottom-up market. Uh, plus, what we have seen is that, you know, market was in a phase of earnings readjustment, and uh, possibly, you know, earning gu guidance has surprised in many sectors. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, financials have stood out in terms of performance, in terms of guidance, in terms of uh, low credit costs. So our view is that, you know, it is better to be uh, constructive on, uh, on a market like India, wherein uh, growth obviously can surprise. India continues to have a, a slight premium to the emerging market. Uh, other emerging markets, markets, and uh, obviously, you know, growth can surprise uh, going forward. Mm. I mean, uh, thanks, uh, Aditya, for joining in. Afternoon, Prashant here. You've got a, I was looking at uh, some of the top holdings uh, for you, and you've got an interesting mix, uh, really. Uh, one name is Barbecue Nation. If you can talk us through uh, that name and why that over other QSR chains, which are also listed. What What's the uh, rationale behind the decision? So one is that, you know, we have, we have been positive on, uh, you know, uh, 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 sort of... A, uh, recovery in the consumer sentiment on the discretionary side. We also have, you know, uh, barbecue and the United Spirits. We have been holding United Spirits for quite some time now. Um, on the barbecue side, clearly it is one of the better managed, uh, uh, you know, uh, consumer companies uh, uh, on the discretionary side. Obviously, that has got to do with the choice of cuisine, and we see. Uh, Delivery being very, very incremental to their mix. Uh, if you look at, you know, their reviews, how they have made a very successful pivot in a down cycle uh, by, you know, taking up uh, a good mix of uh, delivery volumes. Obviously, it is going to be a business which uh, benefits immensely out of uh, uh, incremental capital employed, uh, improving very, very sharply and same store growth uh, improving as people return to obviously eating out. Uh, so we be we believe that you know it is obviously owned by Jubilant as well. The Jubilant is clearly uh, one of the best managed franchises in India, and uh, Jubilant investing into barbecue was clearly a trigger for us uh, to look at this stock. All right, uh, hi Aditya. I'm just reading your note. You, know, you have some interesting picks in there. Uh, some of the stocks that have corrected were 30, 40, 50 percent. New Little Laboratories, uh, case in point. You have Igarishi Motors, the Japanese promoter out there. They're talking about making those DC motors, and there's a huge scope uh, out there. I've done some homework on that. And Aegis Logistics as well. Give us the thesis of this. You believe that some of these stocks are providing good entry opportunities? So what we have clearly seen is that, you know, a lot of uh, well-managed B2B businesses uh, took a knock. You know, if you look at history of Igarishi Motors, possibly... Uh, you know, in last uh, 15 years, they would have never reported a loss, even in 2008, essentially. And what we saw is that, you know, the uh, in a lot of B2B businesses, there was a, a slight bit of, you know, hesitancy in terms of passing on the raw material cost. And not, now what we are seeing is that, you know, we, we are seeing sharp recovery in gross margins across these B2B businesses, be it Igarshi Motors or be it Newland Labs. Uh, we took this opportunity uh, after a you know more than 50 percent correction in a lot many stocks to build up positions. Our view is that you know a lot of these companies are structural winners. Um, some of these companies obviously could be you know very very low in terms of gearing, but uh, going forward, what we believe is that you know they have survived an environment which was very very difficult in terms of you know passing on the raw material cost uh, to 
uh, to the B2B suppliers. Now we clearly see that that phase is behind us. And what we see is that, you know, going forward, there could be a sharp improvement because a lot of these companies continue to be well managed. So what we are trying to do is that we are trying to position ourselves by focusing on bottom up stock picking in the market like this. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, couple of other interesting uh, uh, ideas in your PMS. Uh, uh, you're betting big on insurance. I see both uh, general insurance like ICIC Lombard and life insurance, HDFC life uh, in, in your PMS. So, uh, you know, these have been recent inclusions. Uh, clearly, you know, what we have seen on ICIC Lombard and uh, Chola uh, being a case in point is that, you know, we were uh, very, very constructive on A auto as a segment. Uh, secondly, what we have seen is that, you know, the health insurance bit, which is particularly true of ICC Lombard, has started to now recover. Uh, what we have seen is that, you know, clearly these are very well managed companies. They have gained market share in a down cycle. Uh, the way we are positioning ourselves is that, you know, if we see a great company which has gained, which is, has the potential of gaining market share in a down cycle and which is available at a much, much reasonable valuation, obviously, HDFC Life is a case in point wherein it is available at two and a half times price to embedded value. Uh, the stock got IPO'd at four times price to embedded value. We clearly see uh, downside protection in terms of multiples, um, and we are benchmarking HDFC Life multiples to one of the best managed uh, uh, insurance companies in the region, which happens to be AI. So our view is that there is a very, very limited scope for multiples to derate in these companies, uh, and there is secular growth which, which should come through, and this is part of our uh, defensive exposure in the portfolio. Mm. Uh uh, Aditya, you know, uh, Phenolix, you own Phenolix Cables. Uh, I think it was Phenolix Industries, I mean, the, uh, the pipe maker, that's Industries, right? Uh, which, uh, in a, in a post-results conference call, was talking about how PVC prices uh, have uh, come off quite a bit because of what's happening in China, uh, because demand there has dropped steeply. Uh, could, that, uh, could we see that kind of thing uh, spreading across to, uh, uh, you know, uh, segments like cables, etc. as well? Any thoughts at all? Because the slump in China is expected to last for a while. I mean, some say it's only just started. Go on. So if you, if you structurally look at uh, margins of Phenolex cables, you know, they were more like, you know, 14% debita margin business. Obviously, you know, copper uh, being a uh, input here. We have seen, you know, polycap also being under pressure. But now what we see is that, you know, after this... Uh, destocking of inventory, uh, we, we believe that the second half is going to be much, much better and margins will typically mean revert. So essentially, this is also a case in point wherein we are looking at mean reversion of margins and uh, across the building material space, you know, uh, uh, the demand continues to be very, very strong. Uh, plus, it is a deep value stock for us. You know, they own part of Phenolix Industries as well. Uh, they own 32% uh, of Phenolix Industries. They have got, uh, it is a net cash company. Um, and we expect a growth returning to the sector, hence we expect free rating going forward in this talk. All right, uh, Aditya, we'll leave it there today. Thanks a lot for joining us. Good